All right, so I've made a couple pieces. I'm going to show you some things you can do with them. You probably want to finish them a little bit better than I did, but for time's sake, I'm going to go through it kind of quickly. Now, if you are wanting to combine the pieces together, you may need a thicker lip. So I'm going to add a coil to the inside there. And I'm going to press it in really well. And I'm going to blend that down. So I just want a thicker edge, a thicker lip, so I've got more structure to attach it to. So otherwise, sometimes you can end up with some struggles just trying to manipulate it and not have it come apart. So I want just a little bit more point of contact. The rest can be thinner, but that lip needs to have something I can attach to. So I want to blend around that actual lip too, connect that. You could use tools for this. For most things, when it works, I would just use my fingers instead of other tools. It's less I have to get out, less I have to clean. Um, sometimes the back of your fingers, you know, that fingernail, whether your fingernails are long or not, because mine are not terribly. Sometimes that lets you get a little bit more pressure against there, so it lets you blend that a little bit more. Okay, so I've got that all attached there, but the very top is kind of ragged, so I'm going to take my needle tool, and this is all still in the plastic bowl. So just right on top of that edge of the bowl, I'm going to take my needle tool. Now notice I was holding on to the metal part of the needle, so it's less likely to snap. Now if you just want a flat top and you're just making a bowl, you're not adding on to it, you can still cut it off, but you, then you want to come back and you want to round that lip. You never want it to look just cut off and neglected. But I don't have to smooth it too much because I'm actually attaching to it. So I've got that. I haven't looked at the outside of this one yet, but I'm going to roll with it. And I will want to score this lip. Now some of you are putting your tools back kind of crusty. Please don't do that. So I'm scoring that edge. I'm going to set that aside for a second. And this is just like on those cooking shows on TV. I have a slab pot or a slab ready to go because I'm actually going to use this one upside down. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to slip that lip as well. So I'm going to move that over just so you can see it. Hopefully I haven't gone off screen too much in my demo because that happens. When it's live you can tell me. But okay, so I'm adding some slip on there. Remember that slip acts like a glue. I'm going to score back on top of that. So it really got it nice and squishy. I am going to take my slab. I need to smooth that a little bit first. And in that few seconds, I already managed. I heard my scraper. Okay, so I'm going to smooth that a little bit. So I won't be able to get inside to smooth it. I smooth it now. Credit cards probably work a little bit better, but I didn't have one out. I'm going to take it and I'm going to set it on top. I'm going to take it back off, but now I can see where I need to score and slip. So right where that mark is, probably don't need to slip more. It's already got slip on it, but I want to score that edge. Okay. So I'm going to take the pot out of the plastic bowl. Again, if your clay is still really wet, you probably want to hair dry it a little bit first. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to set it right where. All right, so at the end of the, the last little segment there, I showed you how to flip your bowl over and put it onto the scored and slipped base. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. Now you could cut the base in different shapes. It wouldn't have to be just right up around the, the coil pot. It works either way, so long as you've got a real plan on what you want to do there. 
I cut just a little bit wider and kind of smooth that up a little bit. Just want to be careful I'm not pushing too hard on the needle because I can snap that needle right off of the handle. So just use caution a little bit. So this is one way that you can choose to finish these pieces. There's lots of different ways and I'm just going to address three of them. That does not mean that you can only do these three. So I'm going to flip that up. I'm going to pat that in just a little bit. I could actually get a paddle out there in the ceramic tools drawer. So my coil got a little funky right there. I think it was just a little bit wet. So I probably could go back and do a little touch up there. But I want to smooth in, blend that in, do whatever kind of cleanup I want to do. So where that got really funky, I'm going to want to go back and do something to clean that up. I can kind of redraw my coils. I could put some other designs in there. I've got choices. I want to come in. I could use other tools for this as well. I could make that kind of a scalloped edge. But really, anything you choose to do, you want to make sure is purposeful and on purpose. I mean, sometimes there are happy accidents and you can get away with that, but you can't rely on those. Okay, so now I've got it together. I want to make sure that that's really stuck on there. Just kind of press in. Now I could, I suppose I could leave it that way and put some different tops or something on there. I'm going to kind of roll that edge just a little bit, round it a little. But I picture it being like this, so that what was the bottom of the, the piece is now the top. And perhaps I could take a, either a strip of clay or another coil, and maybe I could make make a top there. If I overlap that, I can cut through both of them. So I get a nice edge that's going to con be continuous. And I want to probably, if it's not very soft, I want to score and slip that. So I'm going to trace that. I want to know where I'm going to cut that. So I can cut around there. I'm going to make sure I catch that piece. And again, now that I'm adding something on, I'm going to score and slip where I attach those. And I could go up more than this, but just for conversation's sake, I'm just going to put the one on there. And I'm going to score around the opening. I can hold on to the inside a little bit where I blend the outside. And I can use different tools here. I can use the, the red rubber tool. I can leave it so that it's very definitely a distinct shape. So it has that, that distinction in there. Or I could blend it in. Again, as long as I make it so it really looks like I meant it. That la that, the lack of intent is often what causes us problems. So that's got a lot of slip in there. I may want to take a little paintbrush, clean that out. Because while it just seems like nothing right now when it dries, it will definitely be something. I reach in there with my finger, use the back of my nail, blend that into it a little bit. And maybe I want to pinch that up a little bit so that it gets a little bit thinner, because that's kind of it's kind of bulky looking. And I could add more coils up and you know really really add some form there. But one thing to keep in mind when you're building a coil pot, it either needs to be blended together really well, at least on the inside or the outside, or you have to score and slip between every coil. You can't just compress it. It will not stay together. Okay, so I can come back 
do some cleanup. And I would want to come back and clean all this stuff up too. That got just a little bit funky. I could have some smooth areas, but in general, I want this the coils on this to show. Now that got really kind of gross there, so I think I may actually just blend that over. But the bulk of my surface should be visible coils. But to have a few spots here and there that kind of contrast that look, that's okay. Maybe want to come back with something else and kind of clean those up a little. Or I could come back, I could do some impressions, I could do some incised designs. So I can kind of mix that up a little bit too. Just remember, if you're doing incised design, the carved designs, you do not want to just use a needle. Okay, so that's one way to finish it. I could do something with that. So I could put it upside down on the slab. Now this other one, I haven't taken out of the, the piece yet, or out of the bowl yet. Now remember, if you want just coil bowl, you can do that and you can leave the top edge irregular or you can cut it and have it flat. Either way is fine. But if you leave it flat, you want to come back and either round or crisp up the edges or maybe round the inside, crisp the outside, or vice versa. But you want to really think about how that lip is going to be presented. Remember I said earlier, you need to either put feet on them or handles or something else like adding a slab to the bottom or I'll show you how to put the two together as well. If you're wanting to do feet, you can either just make, ooh, that was a mistake. I just pushed that over there and kind of crunched it a little bit. I'm gonna roll this on my board. Normally I don't roll coils on the boards because they get too dry. I roll directly on the tabletop. I could make little carrots here. Now, to make that, I tip my hand down so it's not just flat, but I tip one side, in this particular case, my thumb side. Tip that a little bit. And then if you think about it, you know, how many feet should you really do? Three. Why three? Why do you think that's going to be your better option? If you just do two, it's not going to stand up. They're not known for their core strength, like people. If you do four, what's going to happen? That piece was no good. If you make four, one always seems to be just a little bit short. I'm trying to make these match pretty close. A little bonus there, I'm going to take that out. So I'm going to do three. Now if you just have really long skinny feet, they're almost legs at that point, and they're more likely to collapse or break off. But you know, I like spirals, so you could bring them in and make some little spirally feet. I'm trying to make those match pretty close. And what do you need to do when you're attaching them? Score and slip. Want to get some of that crunchy bits of stuff off of there. Now I want to make sure that yeah, I save this to the very end so I don't have to move my stuff anymore. I could put them on the edge a little bit. I could put them if I put them all in the center, what's going to happen? I'm going to have some balance issues. I at least want to put them to the outside edge oops, and make sure that they're pretty evenly spaced so that they look good and are balanced. But I could also put them a little bit to the outside there. Again, score. Where you're going to put it, you need to score. You don't need to put a lot of slip on. You don't need to put it all the way around it. And you got to kind of squish it in there. <laughs> You don't have to make that noise as you're doing it. You're welcome to, though. Again, you want to make sure that you're getting them pretty evenly spaced. Kind of wiggle them in there. 
And this is one of your last steps. And you usually want to let that dry upside down. You can check it, make sure it's relatively levelish. It's not, you may need to adjust a little bit. And then come back, clean up around your feet. Always, always you know, clean your feet. Make sure it's got a really clean edge up along there. You can make it blended, you can have it visible, but you want it clean, no ragged stuff. Okay, so again, you can have it upside down. I would build more up here. I kind of cheaped out there. You can put feet on it. Again, you want to check it, make sure that it's really round, make sure the lip is clean. This is not. Make sure it actually sits relatively level. So look at it from the side, you know, bend down and really look there. And then once you feel like it's pretty good, you want to let it actually dry and I'll fire it upside down so the feet don't break. I'm going to do something that's probably going to make those feet really get damaged. But just as an example so you can see what's going to happen to them. I'm going to score and slip that edge. Add some slip there. I'm actually going to undo, if I can, I'm going to undo that. There's nothing wrong with it. But I want to show you the other thing. As long as they're the same size, I can put them together. I would have wanted to do that before I put those feet on, so I'm actually going to take my feet off. You should have a more clear idea of what you want to do before you, you know, oh, I could do this, and then you take it apart, and then you could do that. This is just for conversation's sake and the demo's sake. So I scored and slipped both of those edges where they're going together, and they have to be relatively soft to make this work. And then I come through, blend that all together. But you've got to make sure you've scored and slipped well. If you didn't, it will fall apart. Guaranteed. But you definitely want to come back and do some fussing with how that connects. Really clean that up because you don't want this nasty you don't want a nasty seam there. It could be visible, but it has to be clean. Really think craftsmanship. So throughout these de these demo videos, you've learned how to make a coil, how to shape a coil, how to build inside of a mold, and then how to use those parts to make a finished piece. Just a couple other things while I'm getting that kind of cleaned up. You do definitely need to come back and clean things up, like where I scored and slipped and didn't need it. I'm going to smooth over those. Make sure your initials or name is on the bottom. Make sure everything is cleaned up and do not uncover them to dry until you are positive it's really what you want. And then talk to me, make sure I agree that you're done. Before you even talk to me, though, talk to some of your peers. See what they think. Okay? Uh, I will show you some other ways that you can make feet, and you can also make candles, but I'll just show you that in class. But that's, that's the bulk of it, so hopefully you got stuff out of this.